the musical mastermind, phenomenal prodigy, and incredible composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart embodies the same musical qualities as the famous Greek mythological legend Orpheus. He is considered to be one of the most famous and prolific composers from the classical period. From symphonies to sonatas to even whole operas, Mozart rose to fame through his music and created more than 600 compositions in half of a lifetime that are still popular 250 years later. Despite the triumph of his incredible musical genius and talent, during the last years of his life, tragedies occurred and plagued him until his death at the young age of 35. Extreme amounts of work, stress from his chaotic lifestyle, financial struggles, illnesses, and effects from the Austro-Turkish War led to his early demise. But after his passing, he became known as one of the most remarkable composers to ever walk the face of the earth. Mozart was born on January 27, 1756 in Salzburg, Austria, during the Classical period. The Classical period was approximately from 1750 to 1820, and it was a time when classical music flourished in Europe. He is most well known for being a child prodigy. His father, Leopold Mozart, was a violinist and music teacher who taught young Wolfgang music theory before he could learn how to write. Wolfgang was able to master the harpsichord at three, create his first composition at five, and wrote his first ever symphony at eight. Mozart had incredible gift when it came to creating compositions. He was able to develop entire works in his head and then copied it down on paper. He composed largely in his head, with total recall once a piece had been completed. Yes, there are instances where he did considerable sketching and rewriting, but still, this ability to write primarily in the mind is almost uncanny. At the age of 14, he heard a 15 minute long musical piece and was able to write the whole thing down from memory after only hearing it once. After realizing he was incredibly talented, Leopold traveled throughout Europe with him to perform. When touring, Wolfgang performed for many famous people, including Emperor Francis I, who was the Holy Roman Emperor and the Grand Duke of Tuscany at the time. Later in his blossoming career, he became the court musician for Prince Archbishop Heronius von Colloredo who was the ruler of Salzburg. After working for the Prince Archbishop in 1781, he then supported himself by becoming a freelance artist and performer and wrote a multitude of compositions. By taking this large step, his career skyrocketed. He was able to experiment and create his own unique style and learn new genres and types of music. But after all his success, tragedies occurred and changed his life forever, and his incredible career made a turn for the worse. In the last year of his life in 1791, Mozart was commissioned by Count Franz Wolfgang Stupik to write a requiem mass for his wife's funeral. Mozart accepted the job and created the requiem in D minor, which became one of his most exceptional works, but it came with a price. His imminent death. As a result of more than 118 different claims to how he died, Mozart's death remains a mystery to this day. This is because any written records of his death have been lost, and his body is buried in an unmarked mass grave. One of the most accepted cause of death is how he lived, and the overwhelming amount of work he had during the last years of his life. I think in his later years, with the stress and the demands, and you know, he was also, he lived a very kind of flamboyant type lifestyle where he was constantly entertaining and partying in the after shows of all the productions, and. It's heavy work putting on a show, let alone composing for it, let alone directing, and then, you know, making the appearances and all of those things, and then becoming a husband and a marriage and childhood, and then when you're being paid as an artist on commission back then, you know, you're at the mercy of having to, com you have no, you can't stop, you know, until a show is done, mm -hmm. if you want to put food on your table kind of thing. He was the man at the time. Imagine a world where you're sitting on top of it, literally, and everybody is nipping at you, wanting a piece of you. The amount of work that he had and the way he lived his life created a lot of stress, which led to many problems later on. At the same time, the Austro-Turkish War, also called the austro ottoman War, was taking place between the Habsburg Monarchy and the Ottoman Empire from 1788 to 1791. 
This brought negative effects to the home front in Austria. The economy of Austria became extremely bad, and the national debt reached 400 million goldens, which is around 200 million US dollars. This caused Austrian citizens to get into great debt, and food prices and taxes spiked, which made it difficult to receive regular necessities a person needs to survive. The war also spread illnesses. The soldiers who survived came to Vienna and brought a fever epidemic in October 1791. Mozart got hold of this infectious fever, which worsened his health. On top of it all, he also went into debt due to the economy, which made it harder to receive medical help and treatment. Doctors couldn't treat him properly because of the poor medicine that was around during the late 17 and early 1800s, which led him to become more ill. He was fully diagnosed with chronic rheumatic fever and severe miliary fever after his death when doctors finally understood what his illnesses were. All of these factors combined were the leading causes of his early death at the young age of 35. Before Mozart died, he became intensely motivated to complete the Requiem because of a large reward Kant Franz Josef Stupik was going to give him. By only focusing on his work and not on his health, he easily contracted the fever epidemic and became sicker by the day. Despite symptoms such as coughing, itching rashes, stomach pain, swollen hands and feet, and vomiting, he continued to work on the piece. His symptoms became so serious that on November 20th, 1791, he couldn't move and doctors had to come to his bedside to tend to his medical needs. Unable to write, Mozart had his pupil Franz Xavier Sussemeyer to help him finish the piece. The pupil assisted him until Mozart muttered his last sounds, which were faint drum rhythms from one of the sections of the Requiem. The magnificent composer gave out his last breath and died at 1.05 in the morning on December 5th, 1791. The next day, a funeral was held at St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna, Austria. Thousands of people all over Europe were devastated, and Constance couldn't even attend the funeral because it was too traumatic for her. On December 7th, he was buried at St. Mark's Cemetery in an unmarked mass grave from all the unpaid debt that had piled up. Since Mozart died without finishing the Requiem, Joseph Embler, who is an Austrian composer, helped Susemeyer complete the masterpiece. Through Mozart's work and the subsequent composer's efforts, they created one of the most greatest musical feats of all time. Above all, Mozart's legacy still lives on through his music. People all over the world play and perform his pieces today, rekindling his spirit. Concert ceremonies and celebrations honor Mozart to this day. In 2006, Mozart turned 250 years old and an enormous festival took place in Vienna. Thousands of people came to listen to his music, attended concerts dedicated just for him, and bought Mozart merchandise. Mozart also influenced the filming industry and the entire musical world itself. His life story was portrayed in the popular 1984 movie Amadeus, which won eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture. Opera was his biggest contribution to music by creating some of the greatest operas in history, such as Don Giovanni, The Magic Flute, and The Marriage of Figaro. The Magic Flute is so popular that it can be found on the twin golden records, which were sent into space in 1977 on the Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft. These records were made for advanced civilizations to learn about Earth, but most importantly, they were made for them to listen to Mozart's music. On top of it all, he also worked in every single genre of music that existed when he was alive, and is responsible for creating the distinctive sound of classical music that people can recognize today. In the 626 compositions he produced, he made over 50 symphonies, 25 piano concertos, 12 violin concertos, 26 string quartets, 17 masses, 21 opera works, and hundreds of other pieces. Despite being heavily stressed and overworked, struggling financially, succumbing to illnesses, and ultimately dying at the age of 35, Mozart remains one of the most popular, highly recognizable, and greatest influential composers of all time. Ironically, he never lived to see the musical impact his work had on the world because he died while composing his most extravagant masterpiece, The Requiem in D Minor. Wolfgang, Amadeus Mozart, was able to make hundreds of compositions, create the definition of classical music itself, and still live on through his immortal music.